Parliament. Good evening. I'm very happy to see all these patient people in front of me. My name is Igor Litvinov. I'm going to talk about um, security of building management systems, the systems which are responsible for automated devices. I work at GS Labs. I am responsible for information security. Before that, I was working with uh, security of um, ICS, and I started with BMS uh, systems in the beginning of my career. And today I'm going to talk about uh, explanation of BMS systems, KMX uh, basics. That's one of the standards for building automation. I'm going to talk about the uh, ideal world, explain what uh, this standard can give us uh, uh, security-wise. I have a question. Have you heard the news uh, about Austria uh, when uh, some rooms uh, were blocked in a hotel? Yes, there was another news when uh, the heating system was uh, breached in Finland. Have you heard about this? Maybe you're tired and you don't want to raise your hands? Okay, BMS system, what is it? You can divide BMS systems into three levels. Field level, automation level, and management level. So this is something like um, ICS systems, but there is one critical difference. So BMS systems, they do not have critical requirements for the uh, time, for the period uh, for the pro of the process. What does it mean uh, are our aims of the systems reducing power consumption, controlling operation of different systems, and ensuring visitors' comfort. So, for example, we uh, entered the room and uh, now we are going home, and uh, the temperature um, in the house is comfortable automatically. So, here you see the main uh, companies which are building BMS systems DALI, uh, KNX, Loneworks. So, for example, Chris Tron is one of the vendors. You've seen uh, the banner here. So, he is uh, going into the BMS systems uh, market now. They're expanding uh, the operations. So, they are also working with showrooms of multi rooms. So, where can we use such technologies? KMIX I'm talking about. You can see some examples of facilities, so for example, Asian skyscrapers, Dubai Airport, and business centers such as Moscow City, for example, in the capital of Moscow. For end users, KMIX, uh, that's something uh, which is represented at thermostats, th uh, transponder readers, or um, room thermostats, so some sensors responsible for heating and ventilation. Colorful words about KNX and its structure. Ethernet and KMX are twisted pairs are the main means of transferring information. KMX power line. Capacity of the network. Maximum 15 areas uh, within one network, uh, one area maximum 15 lines, and one line has maximum of 255 nodes. What are nodes? They're sensors or management mechanism, transponders, et so, and so on. Right now you see uh, this graph explains the transfer of data. So there are two cables which work as a node and uh, through them you transfer the data. Um, frames are used uh, for transferring information. Control byte is responsible for the priority of messages and uh, the decision on whether this message is repeated or not. Uh, then the copy of the source address. Next, Addre uh, address of uh, receiver. Uh, for KNX, there is a lot of documentation that's great, but very often it's contradictory, and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about at the lect on the next slide. NPCI is responsible for the length of the message, the number of hops, uh, to exclude uh, cycling when transferring information in big networks. And uh, BTX is responsible for the group or uh, individual address. In the previous web slide, we've shown some sections where, in one um, place, they say BTX should uh, be one, and in the same rule, uh, there is a requirement to have zero. Um, so that's contradictory.
coding on the frame, uh, your transfer data or com commands. This is the main list of commands which are used for KMX. I was really surprised to see the commands, uh, memory read, memory write, user message, are really surprising for me. So when it goes to Ethernet, it's packed as a semi-message, which is packed also as U2B datagram. Multicast uh, uh, message is used, IP address is used for multicast, and a port. Why question mark here? So we have here another controlling byte. So when we start working in, in Ethernet, and here you see group of individual messages which are um, encrypted. So that was shortly about KNX. And now a couple of words about the ideal word from the uh, eyes of a security officer. So long ago, the security of KNX was based on recommendations uh, from a committee. So just exclude possibility of connecting it to a bus and you won't have any problems. You don't need to do anything else. Later on, the committee uh, created the system of uh, the explanation of how to safely connect nodes, and now the situation is a bit better. But what is happening in the real world? So I looked Shadan sensors and some other global search systems, and until now we see that you can see all these devices from the internet. Unfortunately, how can you be connected to KNX bus and what can you do with after such a connection? First of all, you can use a ready-made device, IP router or USB uh, dogman. Second option, you make a smart transfer transceiver on the basis of NCN5120. Another option to create a transceiver. So this is transceiver which I'm going to uh, create uh, myself. What can a hacker do later on? So we connect to KNX bus in any place, any place. It can be even, for example, the switch um, in the hotel room. When I was doing this research, I was creating this tool for the test because at the beginning of this research, I didn't have any tools uh, at my disposal. So first command was to uh, try to look at the traffic, to try to understand what kind of bus is there and what kind of information is there. Next, scanning of the bus in order to understand what the devices are there and which addresses are occupied. When you connect uh, to the system in any place, you can scan the whole network and understand the places where the IP routers are located. So here we see a situation when integrator was thinking a lot about security, so there is segmentation. So router segments information, so the traffic um, in rooms one, two, three doesn't go further. Uh, read memory command lets us read router configuration and we can understand uh, basic IP addresses in Ethernet and here we can also find several bytes which are responsible for the status of the router. And we will understand is the router locked or not locked. So we learned how to read this information. Next step. Uh, we. Um, write several bytes to the router to unlock it and to uh, close down the segmentation. After that, we, we've broken down the segmentation. Uh, we do not need to have authorization key. We do not need to translate, uh, to transfer the device into the configuration regime. So we found the router, we unlocked it, we scanned uh, the network, and if a hacker wants to uh, do something bad, uh, you can take a router which is open and you just lock it uh, and as a result you disrupt uh, communication of a building. So during the research you also uh, noted that yeah, according to the standard you can transfer 15 bytes, uh, that's the limit, but some routers uh, allow up to 69 bytes and everything is fine. We also noted that some routers 
uh, they need correct Ethernet frame consisting of 69 frames. Without it, um, information won't be transferred to uh, KNX network. To be or not to be, as Shakespeare asked. So the standard explains how to change authorization key in order to improve security of um, limiting the access. So if you have uh, the possibility to introduce a new authorization key and if you change the key from default to some uh, target made authorization key, nothing will, will happen, so it won't work in this case. A real world situation, uh, update of the firmware. I thought that ever since finished, we changed the configuration, we locked the device, we managed to control it, but at some data sheet I was reading information that you shouldn't be afraid to break uh, the device, you'll be able to uh, recreate the firmware through KNX. But the router Yung didn't, Yung didn't work correctly, it, um, it didn't work properly. And I noted some additional codes at um, Inex files, and uh, I thought that something else is there, something I didn't take into account. So we get user message with IPCI codes, and we can read and write firmware as a result. So we got connected to the switch. So not not me, but uh, potential hacker. And the hacker can um, read and write firmware for a switch which is located in a different uh, building uh, within the secured perimeter. So we connected through one place, we changed the configuration, we um, broke the segmentation, uh, we sent malware to one of the routers, and we can um, send virus to other routers, to routers too. So, in order to update firmware through Ethernet at other routers, those which could not be updated through uh, KMX, we need to do several difficult steps. So, for example, we get connected to Ethernet, we uh, start vendor name update tool, and we update firmware. And nothing is happening at firmware. So, in order to assess uh, the scale of possible uh, epidemics, uh, I'll try to explain. So, from microcontrollers and up to ARM processes, uh, we either use some homemade firmware or we use uh, to, uh, NAT OS or Linux. And transceivers, starting from the basic ones, conveyor to uh, KNX TP to ART for microcontrollers and up to more smart transceivers. If you are interested, if you want to ask more questions, I was very happy to meet Joseph uh, Malina here, who was talking about the possibility to uh, manage uh, light because KNX was uh, openly uh, available through the public Wi-Fi. So another um, uh, thing, uh, let's add a couple of titles to Ethernet um, frame in order to provide security. Uh, it's another interesting piece of information. And the last uh, presentation, Hacking Intelligent Building uh, about KNX and KNX networks. Uh, my conclusion, first of all, bad news. DOS attacks for any node in KNX networks um, is possible for the whole network. We can have opportunity to manage any device in KNX even um, it's very simple. We can change router configuration and configuration of other devices using standard commands uh, from the st standard commands. For some routers, it's possible to update firmware through uh, KNX TP. So just through the switch, uh, we manage to update the firmware. And no checks um, are present in vendor management. But not everything is so bad, first of all white paper about security of KNX on the side of organization is now better uh, since three years. It's, but not all vendors follow these instructions. But for example, Jira and some other vendors, judging by official data sheet, they, sheets, they started um, at least listening to these recommendations. But I know what's the real world because I didn't see uh, the hardware. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank my colleagues uh, from Domo Sapiens 
Thank you for your attention. Ready to take your questions.